What's up everybody, it's Manny Ortiz and I'm here with Scanton in my dad's farmhouse hanging out but you know I had to film a tutorial for you guys. So in this video I'm going to talk about why I tend to underexpose my portraits. Now whether you like to always expose for your subject or even overexpose a little bit, there really is no wrong way to do it. As long as you are happy with the outcome, it's all that matters. In this video I'm going to talk about why I tend to underexpose my portraits and what are some of the benefits of doing that. So let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to the inside of my camera. And when it comes to exposing for portraiture, you're gonna see so many different opinions on YouTube and everyone has a different philosophy on this, you know, and that's perfectly fine. Cause like I said, everyone has a different style and editing process, you know what I mean? So what the reason why I underexpose my portraits is to keep those highlights in check. Now, every scenario calls for a different approach, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna underexpose every single image that I take. Uh, if I have some bright highlights in the background, I'm usually going to underexpose a, a stop to two stops. And that's usually where I max out. Everyone, ha you have to know your gear. You have to know the threshold of your gear. Not every, not every camera can provide the same kind of shadow recovery. Or should I say clean shadow recovery? Overall, I just find that slightly underexposing my natural light portrait just gives me more flexibility with my files. It is just a lot easier to recover a little bit of shadow than it is to recover highlights let me give you guys a quick example so in this photo here i got a really bright white sky so i underexposed it and it gives me more flexibility see i can easily bring back the shadows on diana without losing detail and i have that background in check right so in this photo i'm going to properly expose for her and i have a brighter sky right and there's there's nothing wrong with it i actually like how it looks but the point that i'm trying to make here is that with the, the top photo that I underexposed, I have more options with this photo, right? So if I wanted to lift the highlights on the top photo, the one that I underexposed initially, I can make it look just like the one that I properly exposed. But when it comes to recovering highlights, that's where I'm gonna have an issue. So overall, I just have more options with the photo that I underexposed. All right, everybody, I really wish I could have gave you a better example in that clip that I just showed you right now. Um, Mainly because, I mean, I could only work with what Mother Nature gave me. Mother Nature gave me a little bit of clouds that day. So if that sky would have been completely blown out, you would have seen a dramatic difference between the properly exposed and the underexposed image. Uh, but I think I still got my point across in this video. My point is that it's easier to recover shadows than it is to recover highlights. That is why I tend to underexpose my portraits. I don't do this for every single portrait that I take. I every situ I approach every situation differently. If it's a cloudy day where there's no highlights at all, it's just everything's just kind of flat, then there's no need to underexpose, right? I'm gonna just properly expose and work it that way. So with that said, I don't want people to go out there and start underexposing their images, start exposing for their background and thinking they can just recover the, their subject. So you wanna make sure that you don't go too far with it where you start damaging skin tones and you start getting all these nasty artifacts in your images. You want to know your gear and know what your gear is capable of doing. My camera, the Sony a7R 3 does give me a lot of leeway in post. So that, that kind of helps me out a little bit. But like I said, guys, there is no wrong way of doing it, right? I know some great photographers that they tend to overexpose their images because they like that bright and airy look. And that's cool, right? Sometimes I, I want that look. There are some people that just always properly expose for their subject and that's good, right? Because your portrait, the person is the main object of your picture. So sometimes you don't care about what the background looks as long as they're perfectly exposed. And me, I tend to go on the darker side because I can easily bring up the exposure and add my own highlights when I dodge and burn on the face while keeping that background in check. So yeah, that is how I approach my natural light portraiture. I just feel like there are more benefits to slightly underexposing your portraits than it is to overexposing. Just gives you more flexibility in post. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you took something positive from it and just know that, you know, everything that I said is just my specific style and how I, you know, do things. So uh, with that said, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button. And I'll see you next week. Peace.